I'm going to show you some short clips of several over unity machines that people are developing on the earth or have developed. And what an over unity machine is, it's a machine that puts out more power than it takes to run it. Now some people think it's not possible, but I know it's possible. Like with magnets, magnets have the power to pull for hundreds of years. So John, this is the machine? Yes, this is it, Chris. What's it capable of? A little little power house. This will, the machine will provide, provide sufficient electricity to run a house and have power to burn. It sounds too good to be true, but inventor John Christie is convinced his machine will change the world. So John, basically you're saying this machine can produce five times as much power as it consumes. Yes, it, it does. This one, exactly as we see it, it does. And in fact, it can produce more than that. Once kick-started from a battery, John and his partner Lou Britz say this prototype will run for years Split. without stopping. Magnets have the power to pull for hundreds of years. So that would mean that they have the power to pull on motors and rotors to create energy. The engine powered by permanent magnets. This particular motor develops some 9 kilowatts of power in toward the center rotor. As the stages get closer to the rotor, so the motor will start to turn. The closer the stages get, the more power is delivered to the main rotor and the speed will increase. We will be taking this motor up to approximately 3,500 RPM. I just wanted to like sort of impress upon somebody that I have the talents necessary for doing experiments and for making um, prototypes. These wheels are the wheels that are similar to the parent. These are not quite as thick. I think they made them one inch thick. This is only three quarter. Um, I could probably still use these wheels for my next experiment, but I kind of wanted to go bigger. When I was drilling these wheels, the statters were attached to the outside, so the same holes went through. These are the kind of drill bits that I used. They're called Brad Point bits. Note that with the Perendev motor, there is spaces and then magnets, and each one is 60 degrees, or supposed to be close to 60 degrees. And then when you have three wheels, they get offset 20 degrees each to equal the 60, so that you always have more pushing and pulling power than you have negative forces, which allows the motor to run. Basically what I did was I built what I believe the parent of motor is built like, and then I put the magnets in, opposing each other, pushing away from each other, forcing away. Anyway, that's not the way the magnet motor will run. In this picture, you'll notice that these magnets, the north end is here and the south end is here. And then on these magnets, the north, end, the north end is here and the south is here. That's critical. When I built my prototype, my first prototype, I never found this drawing until later that confirmed. I did some hand experiments and then I, I suspected that this was the configuration that would work. And then I found this drawing and it confirmed that my hand experiments were right. You'll notice that these magnets are in line with each other. They line up. Okay, but in this picture, 
the magnets don't line up. You can see this one's lined up, but this one's not, and this one's even farther say, away. When you're inventing or discovering, it's a series of steps. You you probably will make a mistake and have to turn back and fix it and then keep going. Okay. Um, sometimes it takes a few tries before you get it right and you discover the exact right process or configuration you need to make something work. In this case. What I'd like to do is prove how the Perindev works exactly and um, how some other systems work. So one of my greatest hopes is to work with some people and produce a lot of experiments and figure out what's real. Figure out how, these, how magnetism works exactly and the best ways to make it work. All the magnets on this side are facing in the, in the same direction. All the magnets on this side are facing in the same direction. This is the north face. These are the south face. So if these magnets get close together, they're pulling on each other. There's a lot of forces pulling on each other in here. Um, so you got to be kind of careful when you're moving these things around that you don't get them too close together and get your hands in between. The magnets I'm using for the experiment are one half inch by one inch neodymium N42. Uh, they are magnetized through the poles. So two of the things that I like to see happen is that we improve our economic system and improve our energy systems. We built a 10 horsepower model of the process and tested it before 45 live audiences nationwide. During those tests, we measured the input from the batteries. We also used a professional metering device to measure the work that we were getting out of the motor. The input from the batteries was measured at 450 watts, while the output of the motor was tested at 3.1 horsepower, which is the equivalent of 2,300 watts. We were therefore able to prove that the output of the Hummingbird motor exceeded the input of the motor by a ratio of 5 to 1. So here is Knowledge Magazine. Cosmic Katrina, why a solar storm could wipe out civilization at any time. This is my constant concern. Uh, smart people are concerned. And I like this magazine because they do a pretty good detailed explanation of what some of the problems could be. Including the fact that, uh, let's see, 150 years ago the sun fired a massive ball of plasma directly at the earth okay 150 years ago that's not that far the Sun fired a massive ball of plasma directly at the earth causing a monumental solar storm if the same freak space weather happened today says Stuart Clark life on our electricity dependent planet would never be the same again Back in the mid 19th century, in 1859, technology was the telegraph network. While compasses and canny seamanship handled global navigation, as the storm hit, compasses spun uselessly and the telegraph network went down, swamped with electrical currents produced by the solar storm. The solar storm was known as the Carrington event. Now, one of the more recent ones was in 1989, 
northeastern Canada's power grid went down in 1989. Um, in just 90 seconds, six million people without electricity. It took nine hours to reroute electricity into that part of the power grid. Repairs took months.